It's no secret that Arctic Monkeys have had a huge impact on the music scene since their debut album in 2006. Each album a stylistic departure from the last, from the borderline in on punk sound of whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not. To the more polished indie rock anthems on Favourite Worst Nightmare. dark and syrupy desert inspired sound of humbug summer in los angeles inspired sound of suck it and see and the after midnight sexy sound of am have you got color in your cheeks i'm up a bit on a string tracy island time traveling diamond Today we're going to replicate the tones on one of their best albums. Where the band took a more polished approach to their sound and with a wide range of tones, let's dive right into it. It was in 2007 when Arts and Monkeys went back into the studio with producer James Ford to work on their sophomore album and would go on to produce some of their most famous songs, still to this day, 16 years later. First up, let's take a look at Brian Storm, a song that wouldn't feel too out of place on their first album. Brian. Alex had switched up guitars for this album, sporting a 70s Fender Bronco in black, running through a new to him Selma Zodiac amp. The tones on this album are much more overdriven inspired instead of heavy distortion like the first album, but on Brian Storm, he still employs a rat style distortion for many parts, as well as a more edge of breakup drive tone as well. I'm using a Fender Strat as this or a Jazzmaster can get you really close to those bright Bronco guitar tones, as well as a Morgan AC40, which isn't too far away from his Selma Zodiac sound. <laughs> For rat style distortion, I'm using the Keeley Super Roden, and for light drive tones, I'm using the Blues Disorder, also by Keeley Electronics, to give me that edge of breakup tone. If we take a look at Jamie's parts on this song, he seemed to be using Gibson guitars, a departure from the Fender Telecaster he used on the first album, and most notably a Black Les Paul Custom and the 70s ESP35. Not to get what you Jamie's tone is very swampy on this record, employing a nice mid-heavy drive tone and some use of tremolo throughout, as well as some rat style distortion tones. For the mid-heavy drive, I'm using the Noble Screamer by Keely Electronics, and for subtle tremolo, the Gravitas by Chase Bliss. <laughs> now let's take a look at Teddy Picker. A much more clean sounding guitar tone is used by both Alex and Jamie on this song, leaving behind their rat inspired distortion tone. <laughs> Jamie employs the use of a Hughes and Kettner Reuters sphere on this song for the lead fills. <laughs> whilst Alex borrows the same equipment for that legendary solo, with the rate being sped up via the onboard trigger. I'm using the Beatronic CB for this very effect. Next up, Fluorescent Adolescent. One of the most popular songs of this album, Alex is going for a bright jangly breakup tone throughout all of this song, whilst Jamie once again goes for a subtle tremolo inspired swampy guitar tone with a nice mid heavy drive. <laughs> Before once again using his rotosphere to add some modulation to its lead lines. Now we get to the biggest song of the album, 505. Like 
Alex isn't even playing guitar on this song, instead opting for keys. However, we get a fantastic guest appearance from Miles Kane, using a big speed equipped Martin GT75 to add some movement and lead fills to the simple two chord arrangement throughout. Not shy of a spot. Don't forget to add some nice drive and rotosphere s sounds to get this spot on. So there we have it, a quick look at how you can replicate the amazing songs and guitar tones on my favourite Arts Monkeys album, Favourite Worst Nightmare. A nice polished departure from their first album and in my opinion still their best all these years later. Let me know down in the comments which album you'd like me to do next and I'll see you next time. In my